Hey, I'm Andrew Hales. Welcome to another edition of Chatting With. Today I'm here with Kev. Hey. Thank you for being here. <laughs> <laughs> are you a YouTuber? What are you? Uh, I like to say I do social media. I don't like to say I'm a YouTuber. Why um, not? I don't have 100K. I feel like if you have 100K on YouTube, then you're a YouTuber. Okay. So, um, How old are you? I'm 22. What's your full name? It's kind of long. Um, it's Kevin Michael Morado Amarillo. So I have two colors in my name. Hmm. So purple, Morado, purple, Amarillo, yellow. Cool. Yeah. Where were you born? I was born in Manila, Philipp in, in the Philippines. Oh. Yeah. Uh, this place called Quezon City. It's kind of like a suburb of Manila. Okay. Yeah. When did you come to the U.S.? I came here when I was four. Oh, yeah, four. You have citizenship? Yeah. You grew up near Lake Street? Yeah, I grew up uh, near Echo Park. I grew up there and left when I was around 18, so 14 years there. So where are your parents? Um, kind of a gray area. My, I never met my dad. My dad left my mom before I was born, or I would say I really just never, I don't think I never, I met him. And my mom, uh, right a after I got, I was born, she left for the U.S. Hmm. And she got um, spinal cancer. Hmm. Yeah, and um, doctors gave her like a 20% chance to live. And, um, uh, and the only medical, we couldn't have that medical like thing in the Philippines because we didn't have they didn't have the knowledge at the time yeah. and so that's why she had to come here okay. for it and yeah she lost she couldn't walk she couldn't yeah she lost all feeling down her legs and she had to go through like physical therapy where's your mom now um I'd like to say she's here but I don't know you don't know where she is? No. I, I, um, after she kicked me out when I was like 14, I decided I was like never gonna talk to her again or any of my family. Wow. Yeah. Have you talked about this on your YouTube channel? Uh, briefly. Yeah. But, um, no, not really. Do you have any uh, brothers or sisters? I have two uh, sisters. One is, I still talk to her. She's, she lives here in San Dimas. And the other one I don't talk to and she's still stuck in the Philippines. Man. I, I, and then I, I know there's other sisters because um, my, our, my mom told me when I was like 14 before she left, she was like, yeah, you guys are all half, half, sis half brothers, half, half siblings. Hmm. So we have all different dads, same mom. And we don't know how many we have. Okay. Um, when's the last time you were at the Philippines? I was there when I visited again when I was eight. And I haven't been there ever since. It's kind of... I just don't want to visit them there, there again. So you're, you're mad at your mom? I'm mad at my family. You're mad at your family? Yeah. Because they sort of abandoned you? So my, no, um, my, oh, it's going to get a little dark. Okay. Um, well, you don't have to. No, no, it's, it's fine. I don't think it's All right. nothing crazy, but, um, there was a lot of, uh, um, sexual abuse going on when I was like, when I was a kid. Um, okay. When I was like four, so I was like, I was just a kid. I was just a yeah. kid, yeah. And um, yeah, it was just through my cousins. There was a lot of physical and sexual abuse. Okay. That was, um, I think, just towards me. But I think there was a lot of physical abuse that was through my my sisters that I saw. I just thought this was normal. Yeah. But I feel like as I got older, I'm like, 
I tried to tell my parents about it when I came to the Philippines, from when I came, came from the U.S. to here, and I was like, this, this, and this was happening, and they were like, no, that that's that's ridiculous. That didn't happen. Um, they didn't believe you. And it happened. I guess I, I it's it's weird how I remember it vividly because I was two. To, it was maybe like from the age two to like four. And it, yeah, that, I can't even remember before then. Yeah, I just remember it because um, I still I'm I'm pretty fluent with the like Tagalog and um, Tagalog. What's, what's that? Tagalog is like a it's our language in the Philippines. Oh, but um, it was like a every other day occurrence. So I it stuck to me. Yeah. Did you? You talk about that on your YouTube channel. This is the first time I'm telling someone this. And ever in your life. You never went to traditional therapy or anything. I just didn't have money. I just wanted to. Um, I I just bottled everything up. Because my parent, I, I like the person I thought that was gonna do something about it say something about it like my parent like my I told my mom then yeah nothing happened she told me to like brush it off pretend like it didn't happen um oh man This is like so out of my realm. <laughs> like, uh, have you thought about going to therapy? Um, I've I've grown to understand why. I mean, not why it happened. It shouldn't have happened at all, at all to yeah. anybody. But um, I yeah. guess the older I got, the more I understood what I was feeling at the time. Because I that's why I just don't talk to any of my family. Yeah. At all, because it just hurts. They don't even know about it. My mom was the only one that knew, and then the person who did it. Can you like report them, or I just just... rather just they're in the Philippines. It's not. It's just damn. So what are you doing now? Um, just helping. You're, you live in a Chad's, you pay rent. Yeah, so I um, was, I just want to make, the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing right now is, uh, like, in 2017, I was supposed to, I, in 2016, I enlisted for the Navy. Yeah, um, I remember that. I was like, whoa. That was, that was real. Yeah. A lot of people thought it wasn't, but um, I was, I swore my life in, and I had a job already in the, um, I was going to be a logistics um, specialist, so dealing with like supply, mainly like mail, from, from like mail yeah. to like ammo, mm-hmm. and because um, there's also I had a dips in my life, and I just thought this was it. I have to do something about it. And Danny made a full court shot right before boot camp, mm-hmm. a week before boot camp, and he was like. I had this. It, it was just a crazy. Wait, wait, wait. What was the wait? The full court shot. Like, what? Did, what was the significance of that? Um, I told him if he made a full court shot in five tries, I would not go to Navy. Oh. As a joke. <laughs> um, and and, made it. Okay. and this was a week before I was actually supposed to um, ship out. Yeah, yeah. So I was already ready. Um, okay. And this was eleven months. So I got my job, swore in, went through all, through all that medical stuff and all the testing, and I got my job. And then they had, I had, they had to give me eleven months for my job to clear because my job was um, um, was it? Uh, it's called Overman. Yeah. So there's yeah. too many people, uh-huh. and then that's that's why I had to wait so long. And right a week before he made that full court shot in the last try, and I told my recruiter I wasn't gonna go. Well, yeah, what, how do they deal with that? Well, bad. 
definitely bad because uh, they knew I was doing like comedy at the time. I was still ha- I was hanging out with Danny and I was helping him ship out merch. Yeah, and we got we were really close and they they knew I was doing like social media stuff, but I was still inclined to put put Navy on top and. Because I was like kind of like the leader of our little um, squad of our little uh, recruitment thingy okay. of our recruitment station. Um, they were definitely it shocked everybody because I was so dedicated into it um, and didn't go. And my recruiter was my step uh, at the time. It was my step brothers. Um, not step brothers. Um, was the, um, brother-in-law's. He, uh, my brother-in-law was in the navy, mm-hmm. and he was in the same ship as my recruiter, and they were best friends, and so that's why I was able to get a really nice job because my I knew my recruiter personally, and telling him was pretty bad. What did he? What was his reaction? Um, I got yelled at. I had a Jimmy John's for like two hours from two big um, petty officers oh, man. and a chief petty officer telling me that um, I'm never going to make it in life and they'll, and that you'll never get to join the Navy ever again if you do this. But I had to tell myself that. So it was like a dishonorable discharge? No, it was... Well, because I, was, I didn't go to boot camp. Okay. It was not a discharge. It was more like a... It's like it wasn't something too bad on your. It wasn't record. too bad on my record. Okay. It's just like a. They I wasted the recruiter's time. Right, right. And yeah. Hmm. Man. Well, now I feel like we. <laughs> we got to title it different or something, but. That's what I set up. That's why I didn't say. <laughs> Man. With Kev, I was like, let's wait on it. Yeah. I wanted to say this. Yeah. For a while. Well, I'm... I guess, what's your advice to other survivors, maybe? Um... Well, yeah, now I feel like I... I, <laughs> I can't monetize this video. I, I, I should... We should just, like, donate it all to some uh, charity relating to it. You know? Cause I would feel I would feel like weird. I don't know. There, it, it there's a lot more to that because it, it just it, it didn't stop when I was in the Philippines. It 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 wasn't as bad, but it did get worse when I was here. With it was like because it was one of your cousins. Yeah, that was in the Philippines. That was doing that. And then when I came it, here, it was just all physical abuse. When from I was here, your, from every, from I guess your every, mom, your yeah, every everybody, yeah, it was. It was a, yeah. Does it feel better to get it off your chest? Yeah, definitely. Well, um, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> um. Gosh. Oh. When I told you it was gonna be a deep one, it was gonna be a deep one. Well, yeah, I wasn't. I, I, don't, I don't. I never talk. The reason why I don't talk to anyone about like my past, I'm like. Yeah. Or my family, that's the reason why. Yeah, yeah. You've always kind of kept it quiet about it. Um. That's why it's it's it sucks, like for people who've gone through it, especially like in my experience, because you just become an introvert you just shut down you can't tell anybody anything um the only person you tried to tell was your mom Mom. and she didn't believe you i tried to tell um at the time she had a step uh she i had a stepdad at the time which he um, he was the nicest person to me. I I treated him like a father figure. He mm-hmm. was in the 
um, Philippine army. Then he, my mom met him, and my mom, um, she took he took care of my mom during all that physical therapy um, with a whole spinal mm. um, cancer. That's rough. Um. <laughs> I'm such a jackass right now. Um, I don't know how to. No, it's it's. I don't know how to deal with this. I I had to um, or I just, work up to say this too. Like I've been. This yeah. was a. This is a new ground. Yeah. But I feel like this needs to. You feel like it'll be cathartic. Yeah, it's good to for the world to know. Yeah, because. Um, like you would think like my character online I, it's so much different yeah like um than my actual person goofball yeah. exactly um like running around jumping in puddles yeah yeah but if I I remember when I was a food situation when I was a kid was bad too um when I said when I got kicked out um when I was 14 I had to like Ask my friends for like their school lunches in a not weird way. I had to hide it. I'd be like, um, um, just oh I had to take gosh. my lunches home because, uh, uh, just yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't afford food at the time, and that's why I was able to, um, Chris. Chris Chan helped me a lot. He doesn't even know any, any of this. I also hid that from him. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, we filmed every day, and that was my way of just getting away and doing something that I like, because inside I just felt um, nothing. You just feel numb. You just feel emotionless because these. You tell someone about the problem. That's what's going on. Like I, I tell, it sucks. Like I tell these people, like what's going on, like what, what, like the whole divorce thing, my mom, and like the whole abuse thing, and I mean, throughout my whole childhood, I was just getting abused, like any everything, and it's weird. That's why I hate my family so much. Everything, it's it's like an Asian thing. I, I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not saying it's an Asian thing, but it is. Like everything you do is wrong. Everything you, everything you do is wrong, and everything you do that is right is still wrong. They're, you're always wrong. For they they're they're um they're strict. They're yeah. Like it's never good enough. Yeah. You're never good enough, and even though you're the best, even though you wanted you are trying your hardest, um, you're still not good enough. You ever wonder why um, you're dealt such an unlucky hand? Um, not really. I feel like it's it's definitely destiny because if I if I didn't do what I if if the things that happened to me didn't happen, then I would have never filmed for Chris Chan. Like I filmed and edited all his stuff. I've never would have met Chris. I wouldn't done skateboarding I would have not met Danny would have not met any of my friends I I would have took a different route I still met all of them and I've had I had complete opposite childhood well um like the only the the only reason why I went to the skate park was to just get away from my parents fighting and the first person I met there was Chris and he was wearing this like um, this shirt that was like a video game I used to play, and I was like, and then we just I was like, hey, that's the game I used to play, and then ever since we just been best friends, and it it sucks that I was I didn't I wasn't able to tell him this either what I was going through because he met like I think he met my mom and all of them. And he knew my fam. He knew my family too, and Danny did too. But I hit all of it. Yeah, you can. Okay. You um, can cry out however much you want. Definitely holding back tears. It's uh, hard. I mean, I'm a crybaby myself sometimes, but I, it feels good, you know. I don't cry. I I try. Um, 
with all this stuff that happened to me, it just make it makes you it makes you so um, numb. It makes you like not feel for anything. That's why I suck with relationships. Yeah. Because I just I just don't feel anything. Um, okay. Well, does it? I mean, it feels good to cry now, right? Yeah. Um, I think it re- releases endorphins and stuff, you know. Yeah, there's there's the one thing to one big yeah I'm gonna say. Um, more more bad news. Yeah. Oh gosh. Um. Try to kill myself about thirteen times. During the span of um, I mean. Just yeah, your whole the fir- life. The first the first time was like when I was like ten. What? Yeah, um, trying to kill yourself at ten is fucking. Um, yeah, it's unheard of. Um, I mean, you're supposed to be a kid. Yeah, you would think that. Um, Thirteen times. And those are the ones I'm, I counted. Um, there was a. It was. What did you try to do at ten? Ah, uh, overdose. I just didn't know what to do at first. On on um, what? Um, I. I think it was um, um, what's the blue pill? So it was a uh, sleeping medicine. Okay, Ambien or something. And, yeah, I think, and um, I like googled the exact amount that can make me just fall asleep, and um. Uh, I did it, and then. For some reason, nothing happened. Like you just woke up the next day, and no one knew about that. Okay. I mean, I was ten. I just. Um, oh my gosh! You're so mad. Oh my gosh! Oh my god! I bet this is this isn't the interview you were expecting. No, well. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, yeah, I figured we'd talk some, you know, just about, you know, skateboarding and maybe like, yeah, you're just you're a little bit of your upbringing, but. Yeah, I'm good at hiding. A, there's a handful, yeah. But um, I let I'm on. But I'm glad you got it out. I think it's yeah. that's. Better for your well-being. Yeah, I, um, I've always wanted to get this out of my chest, especially because um, if anyone's going through this, it's a lot easier that you know that other people know. Exactly. Um, like I said, like my internet persona is so different. Yeah. Because I, I just like to say to. I like to pretend I'm in, like this. This like my my vet character. He's it's Kev backwards. Um, I like to say like he's the person I've always wanted, like not caring. Mm-hmm. Um, but also in a way, my character doesn't talk because I, um, my character doesn't talk because um, I I love like um, physical comedy because I because I was such an introvert and alone. Growing up, um, it was hard to. I had to learn the English language at first because I barely spoke a, um, a word of English when I came here. Mm-hmm. My mom always had new guys over like every fucking every other week, and um, they would always try to father figure me. Mm. Hated it. Hated it. Um, yeah. It, yeah. It was. It was fucking like every fucking week, new dude. Um, and I would have to just put on a smile and pretend everything's fine. And my mom would take me to new adventures with this new guy, new egg guy every fucking week. And it was just like that, that void that my stepdad left. It's just always filled. I've, I've, I've tried my hardest to find him. 
Um, I, he's in the Philippines somewhere? He's here. Okay. Somewhere. Um, I've, um... You can't find him. No. Uh, but, uh... I just wanted to see him. Because, uh... He's like the only family member I really... Really like, other than my sister. So, and I... He, he shaped me to who I am. In... Because he was... He was the only person that didn't really... Um, that took me, that really showed me, like, I would say love and affection. Right. And when he left, I guess my emotions left with him too. Oh, um, one quick thing too. Yeah. Um, when I was learning how to skateboard, I, like I said, I learned how to skate because I wanted to get away from everybody, everything, my family, my just away away from my family mm -hmm. um i had like this my best friend i would stay with his name was um joseph um i would stay over his house every weekend because um he, he was actually the only person that knew that my what my parents was going through and his parent and his mom knew that that was going like was happening to me mm -hmm. and um he was like the, he was literally my best friend, and um, uh, one day, on in twenty twelve, uh, uh, I got a call from his mom, and he, uh, we stopped hanging out for a, like a, a month, and then um, one day, uh, he um, he uh, he ended his him his his life. This guy was the happiest. I, I, it's so weird because I would seem like he's he was the happiest person ever. He would like teach me how to pick up girls, or and he would teach me how to skate. And when I would get bullied because I was still learning how to skate, um, he would stand up for the bullies for me, and uh, that also ripped away some emotion. <sighs> God, God damn, Kev. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. No. My no. life my life isn't this sad anymore. I've learned. Uh, no. I learned a lot. No, no. It's like I didn't mean it like that. I, I meant like. I, I don't. I, so, so many unfortunate events. Yeah. I think that's most of the unfortunate events that I guess the big hit, hitter, the big hit ones. Also, uh, yeah. Um, oh yeah, one thing too. Um, I, I, it just comes up. I'm sorry. No, yeah, yeah. Um, the physical abuse I was getting. From my when my mom would kick me out. Um, and I would stay with my my cousins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they would just. Um, I would just get physically abused to the point that I couldn't go to school because. Um, um I had like, would come to school with like black eyes and and um. Just um, cuts all over my whole entire, like my arms, and um, that's why um, I had to wear big sweaters. That's why um, when I was like, when I was going through high school, I wore sweaters and long sleeves and flannels because uh, um, I was like cutting because when you're you, when you're numb, when you've gone through so much, you just want to feel something. I wasn't doing it to show off. I was yeah. doing it to feel something. No, yeah, no, I know. You, and I thought in my head the easiest way is to um, to feel like pain, but it just physical pain and emotional pain are so much different. Where emotional pain is way worse, way way worse. Oh and that's yeah, why. definitely. And that's why my, and that's why I stutter a lot because I'm, I'm a, I second guess myself because that's, I grew up, I grew up where my parents and my family was always just second guessing me. I don't know. Do you feel like you need therapy now? I've gone through it. I've, I've gone through 22 years of my life and I feel like talking to someone definitely helps like this this 
I should have gone through therapy when I was a kid. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> but <laughs> if I if the, no, I I definitely told my parents like, hey, I am. I've told my teachers this too. Like, no one believes you. Like, no one did anything. No one. <laughs> no one. Sorry. No, you're fine. Let it out. I told... I remember just telling my teachers, like, all the stuff I've gone through. And, um... No one believed me. And I was going to Catholic school, too, and, like, middle school. And I, and I told, like, my high school teachers, too, what I was going through. Um... My high school teachers were a lot um, more helpful. Um, I would stay at their... Um, I didn't have a lot of friends in high school. Mm -hmm. um, and I would stay at their... I would. I was one of those people that would um, get lunch with my teacher. Um, and that's why when I had a big following when I was in senior year, everybody um, was starting to like me all of a sudden. And I didn't like that at all. And that's why I ended up dropping out and going to a, a home school and getting my... You default. felt, like, used or whatever. Like, it was just because of the clout with Chris Chan or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It, it, because I was just hanging out with these people and filming with them. And it hmm. just felt different. Even though I... It was, it was a big step for me to get out in front of the camera because mm -hmm. I was always in back of it. Yeah, yeah. So um, now that I was getting in front of it, they were, they, everyone just shooed me different, and I did not like. I didn't like that because it was just fake. Mm -hmm. um, like there's so many fake people in LA, and I would consider myself fake too, because um, I hide. I hide. I, it's because I hide everything. I hide like what I feel. I hide. Most people do. Most people have like a you know a facade on like you know yeah but it took 22 years for me to finally let everything out almost 23 um i tried i tried everything i've tried yeah antidepressants didn't work um journals didn't work um just talking to my teachers talking to people i knew family members it's just um Sorry. I know, my, I don't know, my stomach just growled for some reason. All right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just because no one believed me at the time, I just, you bottle it up. Yeah. And that's what, you, you worst thing is, like my best advice is um, to anyone who's going through this, um, don't bottle your emotions up. Don't, if you can, try to speak up. I, speak up. It's hard. It's going to be, it's, it sucks. It's hard uncomfortable super uncomfortable you feel like um you're the only one going through all this yeah and no one likes to be like play the victim or ask for sympathy or whatever i hate that yeah i yeah. don't want to play the victim card um but um but yeah it's it's healthy to express your emotions and your thoughts and to get things off your chest yeah um, and if you keep bottling your emotions up, you lose your emotions. You you bottle up all this abuse. You bottle up all this like stuff that's going on through your head. Like all these, if one emotion is just greater than the other, if the sadness just gets way greater than the happiness you have, then you lose everything. You lose your emotions. You just become a emotionless. Um, just can't feel anything. Hiding it is the worst part. Like, you have best friends, you should tell your best friends what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Hiding it from, like, Chris and hiding it from Danny, hiding it from, like, I, ugh. it's like putting on a mask every day, pretending you're in this fantasy land that everything's gonna be fine, everything's gonna be the best. Like, even, I'm, I'm good at hiding it, right? Yeah, no, I had no idea. Um, you make, all my problems very trivial but that's 
that's what that's a big story in my life and that's why I've always wanted to pursue comedy because seeing people laugh is very it's the happiest thing I can do to myself because if I can convince people to laugh then I can convince myself to laugh because I don't know if I'm happy or not right now like and, and it just my emotion I still feel like an emotionless yeah person because of what I've gone through but this definitely makes me like crying makes this is crazy like crying makes me feel like I'm a person again yeah like I'm human yeah because I, I wasn't I it, for a while I wasn't I felt like I wasn't human it's uh it's better to feel something than nothing. Yes. And, but abuse, do, doing self harm to yourself is definitely not good at all. Like, to anybody, like anyone who's ever feeling the, the effect of self harm is, I don't feel like that's the way to go at all. And definitely talking to someone about it, even though it's, it's the hardest thing, it's just getting it out of your chest. But it's the best feeling in the world. Did you ever try a hotline? Um, yes. Yeah, I don't know. And um, yeah, I called a couple times and then they put me in a watch. They put my number in a, um, at a couple times they had to put my number in a... Um, like the police came or something? Um, police came like twice of the many incidences. Mm-hmm. But um, the like this, I called the hotline before when I was about to do it um, a couple times. Um, they're very helpful, super helpful. Okay. But they put my number on like a watch list, like a red alert. Okay. And they they um, call me. They used to call me like every like every other day to see if I'm fine. Okay. Which is amazing. I love that they do that. Yeah. Makes they put you on check. They're like, hey, we're gonna call you the next day, and like. And you say, no, no, don't call me. And they're like, we're going to call you anyways. Please speak up. Wow. That's, that was, and I, that is like the best. Okay. So they, um, whoever that, so oh, if great. you can get funding for that, yeah. that's definitely helpful. The title should be like Suicide Survivor or something, you know? Because um, that kind of encompasses all the pain I don't know and then we can we can eat and it, we can shout out the the hotline um, charity yeah. you know see that's why I told you I wasn't ugh, this that's why it's so hard to pick a title because there's just yeah. so many incidences you would think <laughs> well I feel like that's a good one like because 13 yeah. times or whatever the ones I counted not the ones before that well I'm glad you were never successful. I'm I would just say it's definitely destiny. It's gotten way too close. Way too close. Yeah. Like the bar breaking was definitely mm -hmm. insane as a kid. And waking up the next day and you're fine after drinking like so many um, Advil PMs for some reason. is kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. It's definitely, um, make, it makes the person who you are yeah you feel like you're a stronger person now yeah definitely um especially this, especially when this video comes out um i don't want I, I don't want i don't want people to feel bad for me yeah yeah at all i don't it it i just want people to um to be what's it called what's the word um I don't want them to go through what I've gone through. Do you still get suicidal thoughts? Not, no. Um, saying with someone who's positive as Chad and Ryan and the whole, like everybody who does skits, especially like Trevor, mm -hmm. makes me a lot happier. Um, I, I'm such a big introvert, but I need, I just need my, I always want to just help everybody. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm sorry, this was so hard hitting. I, 
No, <laughs> no, you're fine. I, I, I did warn you though. This no, was yeah, no, a you're fine. Tough yeah. One. If you are a loved one or need someone to talk to, there's the hotline in the description. Um, check out Kev's info in the description. Yeah. <laughs> His YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for having me. This was super good. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, just know, you know, we're all here for you if you need anything. Yeah. You've always been there ever since uh, the beginning. So, and you were one of the benefactors to starting my starting my whole career of comedy. <laughs> and so. Oh, you mean like? Um, like you get you help you like let landed me your camera back then and then. Oh yeah, I'm and, like that was like nothing. But, but that was big for me. <laughs> that was like giant because that's that that started my whole. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. letting me stay over the house a lot was nice. Yeah, yeah. Especially with Danny too was definitely nice. Well, um, yeah, everyone's ready to listen, you know. So, well, I am. But yeah, you don't have to bottle up anything. Yeah. You know? I've said everything I had to say here. Everything is, everything's out now. I have literally. Great. I feel like I'm literally taking off a mask. Everything's out. I yeah. right now I feel actually a lot happier now. Good. Yeah. Um, well. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. Um, it's, yeah, I can say I'm happy right now. <laughs> Shit. That's really weird. Well, no, no. That's like, that's like the basis of whatever, like psychology and psychiatry and confessions like, and. Sci even Scientology, their whole, like, just the act of um, confessing stuff, uh, like yeah. they say, makes you, like, like, euphoric, and it's, like, a relief and stuff. Very, like, th uh, therapeutical. Yeah. yeah. Um, let us know what you think in the comments about Ugh. all of this. <laughs> and uh, thank you. I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.